tell us a bit about the setup here. So I got the car from a buddy of mine uh, about two, three years ago. Um, he took really good care of it. Uh, always liked the S2000 and um, was always a big Honda guy. So got this. It was supercharged for a little while. Um, had a Novi 1200 with a Science of Speed kit on it. Uh, got really used to the power with that. So decided to go turbo on it. Um, ended up contacting Jason Schmuck, which is a buddy of mine from back home. He does turbo kits. He did the entire turbo kit, manifold, cold side, intercooler. Um, threw on a Borg Warner 362, which is basically a 62 millimeter, um, just to get it going. Still had stock trans, stock diff. Uh, I was probably making 5, 550, E85. Um, ran pretty good, but I uh, was getting used to it. Um, ended up going to a putty mod diff just to hold some power to it. Uh, stock, stock diffs don't like a lot of power. Um, then uh, ended up blowing two transmissions and uh, decided I needed to do something with the transmission. So first transmission was a CD009 out of the 350Zs. Um, and it held pretty, I mean, it holds power, but they're super notchy. Uh, locked me out a couple times, ended up breaking the clutch disc, uh, did some other stuff. Probably pulled that thing out three or four times, and I just kind of got sick of it. Um, and I knew I was going to shoot for a lot more horsepower. Uh, so it was still stock block, held that train in it. I was probably making 7, 750 on the CD009. Ran pretty good. Um, and then I decided uh, to rip it all out and redo the uh, drivetrain. So, big thing new that I did was I uh, got an ATF Power Glide GM transmission kit to bolt onto the F20, which is the factory motor. So, it has a fully built Power Glide built by Josh, Josh Ross, Ross Performance, right here in Washington. Um, so, big shout out to Josh. We were going to go TH400, and he actually is the one that said no. We're going power glide. It's going to be faster than a power glide. There's a lot of guys out there on TH400s, on four cylinders, um, but they suck a lot of horsepower. They're heavy. So uh, we went with a power glide. Um, so uh, it was pretty, there's a lot to get used to, that's for sure. The first time out was pretty weird. But as you can see, it literally, it just cruises. It's super easy to drive. Your grandmother could drive this car. It's got a BNM Pro Ratchet Shifter, so all I gotta do is just ratchet down, low gear, ratchet up for high gear. It's that easy. And then what's the button do? Trans brake. <laughs> and then I got another button here. That's for when I need to uh, pull on somebody a little harder. When you go a little faster. A little faster, yeah. In case a twin turbo bed or something. Yeah, or? yeah. That's that's the uh, I need to go faster button. That's the, the <laughs> twin turbo vet killer. Yeah. So actually, originally, uh, I didn't want to put nitrous in the car originally, um, but as I'm sure all the four cylinder guys with autos know, really hard to get on the trans brake without nitrous because the uh, the small engine just doesn't. Well, Evo in front of this. He's trying to catch the gap, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah catch the gap.
off-the-shelf pistons, nothing special, and it's got Jeremy Allen's uh, sleeve set up. It is O-ringed. Um, and then head-wise, it's got 6.6 six, uh, exhaust valve stems. They're the, the factory size valve stems are known to snap off, so we went larger on the exhaust side. But as a uh, factory factory valve sizes, the stems are bigger just to hold the power. Um, it's got full valve train, of course. But it's still on stock throttle body, stock intake. Um, it's the stock stroke. It wasn't bored out. It's still a 2.0. Um, it's your off-your-shelf kind of stuff. Uh, and then we switched to a, I had a Borg Warner 372, which is the 72 millimeter turbo that Borg just came out with. And just wasn't super impressed with the amount of boost I had to make to create power. So ended up going with Precision eventually. And uh, now it's got a 7275 Gen 2 on it, which is a dual ball bearing setup and everything. So uh, it definitely makes more power with the 7275. I haven't even had it turned up yet. Turbo literally just went on like a week ago, uh, but I definitely like it a lot more. It comes on a lot harder. Um, but yeah, what else?
so who built the car? So I built the whole car. Um, never seen a garage, never seen a shop. I do everything in my, my house. Um, put the transmission in, had the motor out twice. Did the whole turbo kit, um, rear end, everything is done right in the garage. And I tuned the car as well. Um, it's on AEM EMS version 2 right now. Um, I'm just real comfortable with that system, so I stuck with it. Um, cradle by X Performance. Um, aluminum drive shaft. Uh, shaft Masters did the drive shaft for me. Um, I actually did the, uh, the mount, the trans mount myself. And then it's got the ATF GM to F20 kit on it. Probably one of the nicest automatic kits you can get for the F series. There's a couple other companies coming out with them. Um, always takes some time for other companies to come out with kits. But fully CNC machined plate, uh, CNC machined converter adapter, um, super nice kit. We're in a precision turbo now, huh? Yep, yep. Moved to precision. Shout out to uh, Tuner Geeks, Donnie Carroll, Tuner Geeks. Got me uh, hooked up on the Precision, the 72, 75 Gen 2. And so what's up with the scramble button? That was what, one of the buttons inside, right? Yeah, so what does that do? It, it does have nitrous. Uh, originally the nitrous was really just designed to get up on the stall uh, when launching the car. But of course, I have it there, so I might as well use it. So I did wire it into EMS, and I have it hooked up to where if I need to, I can grab the button during a pull, um, which normally I don't have to. But just for those, oh, just shit. for those cases, if uh, someone's out on me, I just need to reel them in. Yeah. You're sleeping. If I gotta reel them in, I got a button. Shit. But yeah, it was originally just to get up on the stall. Uh, small motor just can't push through uh, a stall to get up on the two-step, so we use nitrous to spool it up. So what fuel system? Uh, so I built the whole fuel system. Um, it's got a full-blown rail in it, dash eight feed, dash six return, air motive regulator. It's got 2200 cc FIC injectors, um, and it's got two 450 Walbrels in it, and they're staged. So the car will run on one pump normally, and then when it gets into boost, second pump will kick on, run into fuel pressure problems. So. A single 450 is only good for like 700 on 85. So running pumpy 85 on it. Um, so we'll see what it does. We really haven't turned it up up yet on this turbo, but I plan on maxing this whole fuel system out. So <laughs> she'll make some jam. What are you going to try to make? We're thinking it's going to be sitting around mid nines to high nines. It really depends on where the fuel system gives up at. Nice. Where the 450s give up. Well, that's uh, your goal. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to crack a thousand? I mean, nitrous will crack it. But yeah, again, true. with nitrous, obviously you need fuel. So I got to see how much the pumps are going to are gonna hold on. But really uh, no like crazy goals. Like Everybody has asked me, what's your goal? What's your goal? It's like, I never really had a goal with the car. I just, I wanted it. Is it a dry a, shot? Yeah, it's a dry shot. Oh, yeah. is that a turbo car thing or? No, it's just easy. Oh. Um, and there's no point to do a wet shot if you're running EMS where you can just inject the fuel in yourself. Gotcha, makes sense. The fuel. As long as you got enough fuel injector for it. Um, and if I were to have to, if, if I'm trying to make over a thousand, then I'd have to move to larger fuel pump, probably go on eight injectors and do all that. But I really don't really want to do all that. I mean, the car makes enough power for the street as it is. It's not a drag car, it's just a street car, so. True street car. It's gonna make what it makes and that's it, so. Thank you.